ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one the happy, happy people have to say. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about Wheaties. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musio, known as Stan the Man. Because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties' energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties' flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll sell it! Oh, fella. Oh, hello. You made that trip in a hurry. Ah, uh, me come to tell you, Fatal Smith is loose. Loose? He was to hang on Friday. Well, last night, gang break into San Bernardo jail. Kill sheriff, get Smith out. Stage driver, bring news to town. And we have work to do. Fatal Smith is a killer of the worst type. As long as he and his gang are at large, no one in the West is safe. It's a long way to San Bernardo. Trail cold when we get there. The outlaws may be headed this way. Well, uh, why do you think that? If I were a fugitive, I'd try to reach Hardscrabble here in the mountains. The most lawless mining camp in the West. Oh, well, that's right. We hear four marshals get killed there in last year. No one take job of lawmen. So that's where we'll look for Smith and his gang. Here's Hilda. Several days later, Tom Rossford, a former New York policeman, sat at a table in the Gold Eagle Dance Hall, the biggest and toughest place of entertainment in Hardscrabble. A bearded miner approached with a question. Want to buy him a gun, Pilgrim? I'll sell it for $30. I don't believe in private citizens carrying a gun. Maybe not, but I do. I wouldn't sell mine if I wasn't broke and ready to leave this <coughs> infernal camp. Didn't you strike pay dirt? Yes, but claim jumpers grab the place of stakeout. What this camp needs is a good marshal. Oh, 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 oh. Tom's remark brought laughter from a party of camp toughs at a nearby table. You hear that, boys? Skinny Greenhorn thinks we need another marshal. Not shooting, I am. Citizens have no right to take the law into their own hands. We've planted four marshals in this camp. They were all quick on the trigger. Maybe you'd like to try your luck as Marshal Number Five. Maybe I would. I'll see you later, Marshal. Well, young fellow, what do you think now? I'll buy that gun, Mister. Here's your money. Well, here's a gun. Ain't much to look at, but it works. A short time later, as Tom examined the battered old Colt, a girl entertainer slipped into a chair at his side. Knowing her casually, Tom forced a smile. Hello, Lil. Tom. I saw you buy that gun. <coughs> Why did you do it? I'm tired of being at the mercy of bullies and outlaws. You're inviting trouble. It's better to stay out of a bad man's way than cross him, even though you have a gun. I know how to use one, Lil. When I was on the force in New oh, York... you ought to quit thinking about the past. Your health has improved a lot since I first met you, but you'll always have to stay in the West. 
Why not make the best of it? Believe me, Lil, I'm grateful to this country of yours. It's done wonders for me physically. Sometime the right man will come along and tame hard scrabble and open the way for religion and education. You know, they say there isn't a single book in this camp. Well, I have one right here in my breast pocket. It's the manual of the New York Police Department. Tom, Tom, must you always think of that? Lil, police work was life to me. I must go now, Tom. But be around tonight. I'd like to talk to you some more. And I'd like to listen. I'll be right here, Lil. That night, the Gold Eagle Cafe was packed. A so-called professor hammered a battered piano. Several volunteer musicians, whose red shirts and ragged beards marked them as miners, sorted fiddles. Lil, the stranded actress, sang Camp Town Girls, then joined Tom Rossford at a table while a square dancer called... Fill up the floor for a quadrille! Oh, thank you! Four more couples over here! Four more! Soon heavy boots thumped the floor with a violence that shook the walls of the dance hall. Lil, who had turned her attention to the long bar, was saying... Tom... I don't like the looks of a lot of men in this town, but the two standing over there look specially rough. Well, they certainly are heavily armed. They came in separately, but now another man has joined them. Uh, there's Fatal Smith, the killer. I've seen him before. At the old man's words, the music died and the dancers froze. All right, I'm Fatal Smith. But if you people don't want something fatal to happen to you, you won't try to be heroes. Cover them, boys. They got our guns on them. Up with your hands. All of you. All you dancers, get back against the wall. Professor, you and the fiddler, stay where you are. As the dancers rushed to obey his command, Fatal Smith advanced on the stranded actress and tubercular Easterner. I am to dance with you, miss. I'm not dancing. <laughs> That's what you think. The law figured to make me dance on air today. But instead, I'm going to do a poker with you. Come on. Don't touch the lady, fellow. Look, Pipsqueak, you're an Easterner, so maybe you don't know who I am. <laughs> I'd do as I please. You won't if I can help it. <laughs> <laughs> fellow, you're so near dead, it wouldn't be any fun to kill you. <laughs> Tom, you'll get yourself killed. Keep out of this. I'll dance with him. And let's do our steps, huh? Professor, strike up a tune. And make it good or it'll be your last one. So great was the outlaw's contempt for the Easterner that he discounted the possibility of his being armed and in a mood to welcome death. He reached out to seize the girl, but before he could reach her, Tom was in front of him. Loosening the newly acquired gun which he had thrust into a pocket, the former New Yorker called... Oh, you killer. <laughs> Where do you want it, Greenhorn? Tom, sit down. Here it comes through the heart. Oh. The impact of the outlaw's bullet hurled Tom against the table, but even as he collapsed against it, his own revolver blazed. No. Michael Smith dropped his guns and clutched an arm with a groan. For some wings. Tom, oh, Tom. Steady, folks. Steady or you'll get what the Easterner got. Each time we've almost failed. Yeah, wait till I pick up my gun. Only nicked. But now I'm going to plug that skinny varmint again. No. Go oh, see your gun, Fatal. No one lives after you pull a trigger on him. So let's get out the back door to our horses. All right, but I'm taking the girl along for a shield. Get away from that tentacle's carcass and come on. Let go of me, you murderous thief. Take her along, oh. Fatal. Miguel, oh. open that back door. Please. There, I have opened it. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had arrived at the edge of the mining camp in time to hear the shots and trace their origin to the dance hall. Turning their horses into an alley, they reached the rear of the place just as the outlaws backed out with a struggling girl. In the light which poured through the open door, they recognized Fatal Smith and brought their guns to bear as they called. Let go of that girl, Smith. You can't get away. Drop guns for me, too. Fast, man. The Chilantes, the alley's full of them. By this time, the ogres inside have thrown their guns. Well, we can't go back. We can't go on. I'm dropping my gun. Mine, they have thrown away. Oh, there goes mine. Now take the girl. Turn around and go back into the hall with your hands up. My friend and I will be right behind you. Please stand aside, miss. Yes. Guns away. At that moment, it dawned on the miners in the hall that the flight of the outlaws had been halted in some manner. Through the door poured a hail of bullets. Captors and captives alike were driven to take refuge along a dark wall. The masked man was calling... This way, miss. You men inside, hold your fire. The gang has been captured. In the roar of gunfire, his words went unheeded. Quick to take advantage of the darkness of the wall and confusion created by the unexpected shooting from inside the hall... 
The outlaw known as Miguel slipped out a hidden knife and lunged at Tonto. This for you, you Indio. Oh. As the Indian whirled to meet Miguel's attack, the outlaw called Bill grabbed his gun hand and tried to wrest the six-shooter from it. Twisting and bending, Tonto evaded Miguel's knife, but could not shake off the other outlaw. Get him, Miguel. Keep hold of him. Seeing his friend's danger, but unable to shoot into the tangle of writhing bodies without further endangering him, the Lone Ranger holstered his guns and sprang into the fight. Just as Miguel aimed another knife thrust at Toto, the masked man caught the descending arm. No, you don't. With the Lone Ranger and Toto locked in mortal combat with two of the gang, Fatal Smith again seized the girl, who had stood by dazed. He was yelling. No. I got to come on, Louis. What about Miguel and Bill? They won't need our help. Give me a hand with this girl and we'll run for our horse. Right? Help! Help! Yell on your life. You're a ticket out of here. Although he realized Fatal Smith and Louis were about to escape with the girl, the Lone Ranger was unable to break away from the knife-wielding Miguel. Tonto's adversary was screaming. Wait for us, Fatal! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Diving Doris is 13, and she is a diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast, and you'll get go power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now, to continue, as Fatal Smith and Louie rode off with their captive, the savage hand-to-hand battle in which the Lone Ranger and Tonto had engaged two other outlaws continued in the alley. The wiry Miguel had his keen-edged knife at the Lone Ranger's throat several times before the superior strength of the masked man told. Drop that knife. For you'll never. And take that. And tell where the knife. She's gone from my hand. I'm finished. And stand there against the wall and don't move. Turning to see how Tonto had fared, the Lone Ranger found that the Indian had concluded his own silent battle by stretching the other outlaw unconscious. At the same time, the miners in the hall began to peer cautiously from the doorway. Here are two members of the gang. The fatal Smith and another outlaw escaped, holding a girl as hostage. That's Lil, Lily Bell, our singer. Hey, you're wearing a mask. What does that mean? Maybe he's another owl hoot. My mask doesn't mean I'm an outlaw. If I were, my Indian friend and I wouldn't have captured these prisoners. I reckon that's so. Hey, Thunder, he and the Indian have got two of Fatal Smith's gang. What did the gang do here besides capture the girl? Uh, Smith killed a skinny little Easterner who stood up for Lil. The other owl hoots kept us from interfering. Hey, let's round up all the miners in camp and go after Smith and the other fellow who got away. Well, there's nothing you can do tonight except trample out trail signs that may be visible in the morning. It's too dark now to follow a trail, and the outlaws already have a big lead. Now, now, hold on, fellas. Mass man's right. Better wait. Where can these prisoners be held? Well, there's no jail here, and we have no marsh. Bring those two varmints into the dance hall. Maybe we can arrange to hold them there. Get up, brother. Get up. Oh, oh my you come now. I'll bring the other one. Thunder Ration, look there. The Easterner's come to life. He's sitting up on the table. It can't be. I saw Fatal Smith aim for his heart when he shot. And Fatal Smith don't miss. Just what his name says. Hey, look, fella, this isn't Resurrection Day. Just lie down again and be dead like you ought to be. Dead. I'm not dead. I just fainted. Uh, be a little bit reasonable. Isn't that we don't want you coming back to life? Otto, guard the prisoners while I examine him. There, I have your vest open. Look at what fell out of his vest. It's the 45 bullet Fatal Smith shot him with. Uh, Miss... I'd rather you just call me Tom. Very well, Tom. All you suffered from that bullet was a bruise over your heart. The way Smith's gun sounded, there was plenty of good powder behind that bullet. Tom, you must be bulletproof. Well... Then let's make him Marshal of a Hardscrabble. 
Man, I'd like to be marshal of this mining camp. But I don't want the job because you think I have a charmed life. I haven't. The only reason I'm alive is that I once belonged to the police force. How's that, Tom? The thing that stopped Fatal Smith's bullet was a manual of the New York Police Department, which I had in my breast pocket. Here it is. What? Thunderation, a bullet. The bullet went completely through it, but its force was spent. I reckon you were lucky, but lucky or not, we still want you to be our lawman. It'll take a little time to get you appointed. But you can start being marshal right now, and we'll back you. How about it, fellas? It was late the next day when the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Tom Rossford struck the trail of the outlaws and their captive. A posse of miners had long since deserted them to return to their diggings. As they rode slowly into the ever heightening altitudes, following the tracks of three horses, Toto held up a hand. He must have a better we stop. We hear someone come. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, I hear the hoof beats now. That's a woman right there. Hi, it's Lil. Oh, oh, there, oh, 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 Tom, Tom, it's really you. Yes, Lil, I'm still kicking. Oh, thank heaven you're alive. Tom quickly explained what had happened and asked... Did the outlaws release you? A crook called Louie let me go with the understanding that I'd deliver a message to the masked man. He said such a man would be tracking them and that I'd meet him on the trail. He must have met my friend here. He probably did. Though I can't understand why he was so sure I'd follow the trail. What was the message, miss? Louie wants to betray Fatal Smith to you. He said he was afraid of being lynched and believed you'd save him if he turned on Smith. When did he tell you that? Less than an hour ago. When Smith went away for a few minutes. Then he set me free and gave me a horse. Where are the crooks staying? In a deserted prospector shack two or three miles from here. The last mile of the trail to the cabin is overgrown by tall brush. And it's lined with saplings. Lodge poles, I think they're called. Only one horse can pass through at a time. Well, that sounds like crap. I thought of that. But the crooks have no weapons. Let's ride in on them. No, Tom. We ride as far as the beginning of the brush trail. I want you to wait there while Todd and I scout the place on foot. And let's go. All right. Come on, Tilly. Oh, yes, the swift twilight of the Sierras had begun to fall when the Lone Ranger and Tottle left Tom and the girl with the horses and began to work their way toward the shack, keeping to scant growths of stunted trees which grew on high ground several hundred yards from the brush trail. Midway to the shack, the masked man pointed. Look at the top of that sapling along the trail the outlaws wanted us to follow. Ah, it bend west. This country trees often grow into bent shapes because of the wind. But the prevailing wind is from the west. They always bend eastward. Now, me savvy, what kind of trap crook set for you? A snare, of course. They pulled down the top and held it in that position with a pole which serves as a trigger. We here to look, we'd find a wire noose attached to the top of the sapling. Ah, uh, me see animals caught like that. When animal run into noose, trigger fall. Tree flies up, him get hung. Yes, it's an old method of trapping deer. All right, let's move on. Wait, Kim, Sally. Yes? Two men riding down trail, plenty fast. Adel Smith and Louie, they've seen us. Now then, dodge snare. Maybe we'd better shoot. Shots fired from this distance wouldn't stop them. Let's get back to the horses. Ah. At that moment, Fatal Smith was telling Louie... You saw the masked man and engine just in time. Yeah, you might have known that the masked man wouldn't fall for a trick like a snare. He still hold the high card. Well, I don't know how. He must have left their horses near the end of the brush trail. Hey, that's so. It'll soon be dark. If we can rustle them, we'll get a big start. We're coming to the end of the brush trail. Well, here's the clearing. And there are the horses. Hey, someone's with them. Yeah, likely it's only the girl. Pull up, you fellas! You're coming! Don't shoot! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look, Fatal... It's the Eastern. Why, it can't be. You saw me plug him. He has to be dead. All right, get off your horses. This is the end of the trail for you, Fatal Smith. As Tom, who had been standing beside the horses with Lil, approached the killer like a vengeful apparition, Smith whirled his mouth with a howl of terror. No! Hey, get up there! Stop or I'll shoot! You never get me! I missed him. He's getting away. There he goes into the brush trail. I'll follow him. No, no, Tom. Guard this other crook. The masked man and Indian can take care of Fatal Smith. Shots may be him. Tom have trouble. Wait, Toto. One of the outlaws is riding back up the brush trail. I just caught a glimpse of him. Plenty dark. All me see is treetops. He must be near the snare now. At that moment, the evening stillness was broken by the sound like the twang of a mighty bow. 
Straining their eyes into the gloom, the masked man and Indian saw the bent tree straighten suddenly and shake its budding branches against the sky. Then all was silent and motionless. The Lone Ranger and Tonto dashed toward the snare, well knowing what they would find. Late that evening, a strange procession halted at the edge of hard scrabble. One rider was a masked man, another an Indian. With them were a former New York policeman and a former actress who had found their destiny in the West. Two other horses bore a sardonic prisoner and a dead man. The Lone Ranger was saying, Tom, uh, how long I must leave you here? But you haven't explained how Fatal Smith happened to ride into his own snare. It seems a fate we're in an ironical mood. Perhaps the killer was overcome by superstitious terror after seeing Tom. Perhaps it was so dark he failed to see the trap in time to dodge the noose. Well, it was poetic justice. Yes, he received the punishment he deserved. Now the West will be a safer place in which to live. Lil, that's the end of Fatal Smith. But for you and me, this is just the beginning. Yes, Tom. Our beginning. Perhaps we'll meet again. Adios. 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 Thanks, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> you have little to laugh about, Louise. <laughs> I have plenty. I'm wondering what Fatal Smith thinks now about setting a snare for the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.